Thank you very much. Yeah. Welcome all of you at this time. <clears throat> Today we want to meditate the book of Luke, chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 from verse 11 to 27. I will read Luke chapter 19 from verse 11 to 27. I will read. Luke chapter 19 from verse 11 to 27. I will read. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king, and then to return. So he called ten of his, his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to, who, to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant. His master replied, Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a place of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, you knew, did you, that I am a hard man taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I come back I could have, I could have collected it with interest? Then he says to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. So they said, he, he already has ten. Verse 26, he replied, I tell you that to everyone who has more will be given, but as, as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those what, those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in, in front of me. Amen. <clears throat> Today we want to meditate the parable of Minas. Uh, um, today is uh, <laughs> rainy. <laughs> Somehow. Mm. It would be somehow difficult to focus, uh, but then I hope you can focus on this word of God well through this time. Mm. Yes. Um. So we today in the morning we looked at the parables of Mina. Uh, is this okay? This sound? 
Is it too big? Is it okay? Yeah. So today in the morning we looked at this parable, but then we want to look at this again at this time. So the parable of Venus is the this parable is similar to the parable of talent, Matthew chapter 25. Uh, but then somehow different, but then it's talking about the same things. The master gave, as he was going to journey then, he was giving it, each, each one of his servants the talent, the, but then different amount of talent. But here, the mina, he gave, he gave 10 servants, one mina to each servant, one mina to each servant. So what is this talking about? <laughs> Yeah. Who is the master? Hmm? Master is the God, the God of creator of this world. Yeah? The, who is the servant? Hmm. The servants of God, or the disciples of Jesus Christ. The, the people of faith, the people, the believers of God, who, are try, who want to live serving God. Hmm? What the people in the world, the mina, each person received the, the one mina, the same amount of mina. But talent, one person received five talents, the other person received two talents, and the last person received one talent. People are different. People receive the different characteristics, has the different characteristics, different abilities they were born with. They are different. Each person is different. Mm. But then each person can be the same before God. We are all the same before God. Uh. We are all loved by God. We are equal before God. Uh. Even though outwardly, we, we are different. Uh, we have different ability. We have different characteristics. But then we are living with the same time, in the same timeline. Well, some people, I'm, I'm good at one part, but I'm not good at the other part. But the other person, he will not be good at one part, but he will be good at the other part. <laughs> you know, these kind of things. Uh, each person can be different. But then, all will be living yeah, as a mankind, the same. With a similar human right before God, loved by God, same, same, similar love by God, <clears throat> the same. I see, I use this example many times, right? If the parents have ten children, huh? but they are all different. But then some children are good at the academic things, or some children are not good. Some children are, they are really obeying their parents, but some other children they are not really obeying their parents. But then they are all loved by their parents. The parents' heart is are all of their, their, their children go well, grow well, live well. Uh, even after I die as a parent, but I want all of my children uh, to live well in this world. Uh, that is the heart of the parents. The heart of God looking at this world is the same. Uh, but here, the parable of Mina is this one. Uh, we are the same before God. Uh, we are the same. Even though outwardly, we are different. But then we are the same <coughs> before God. So here, for example, we receive, we are living at the same time. We receive the same timeline for our life. Even though outwardly some people are living so very long time, lifetime, some people are living very short lifetime. <laughs> but then we can say we are living at the same time before God. As the same human being. So anyway, here, but then we want to see why did Jesus talk about this parable? Why? So here, verse 11, while they were listening to this, 
listening to this, what are this? Yeah, the, there was a there was a feast in at the house of Zacchaeus. Huh? Uh, so Zacchaeus could be saved. Huh? Zacchaeus could be saved. So when maybe it was even Jesus was teaching this parable at the house of Zacchaeus. Huh? So while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. Because maybe it was almost three years past <coughs> after Jesus started the, his public mission, the commission life. And then people thought that then, ah, as Jesus is coming to Jerusalem then, Maybe Jesus will recover the Israelites. Jesus, by Jesus Christ, then eh, the Israel can be recovered. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of God. We can, they thought that then the kingdom of Israel can be the kingdom of God, the chosen people, because the Israel is the chosen people of God. So they thought that then, ah. As Jesus was near Jerusalem then, the people thought that then, the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is going to appear at once. Yeah. Ah, God, Jesus will do something, <laughs> surprising things <coughs> in this world. Uh, Jesus will do something great. And then the kingdom of God will come to this world. That's how people thought. But then Jesus was using, as Jesus was teaching this, the people with this parable then, Jesus was trying to teach about the kingdom of God, how the kingdom of God would come to this world. <coughs> Verse 12. <clears throat> he said a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minutes, put this money to work, he said, until I come back. That's how he did, as a normal, the master, noble person. Then he called ten, ten of his servants, then gave them, each one of them, one mina to each servant. Then you need to work with it, put this money to work. And then I will come back. <laughs> but then there was the enemy, verse 14. But his subjects, the people, outside the people, not the servants, the outside the people, they, the subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. You know, the disciples of Jesus, yeah, they were the disciples or servants of God. They were listening to Jesus. They were obeying God. Hmm? But then the outside the people, they hated Jesus. You know, <laughs> they hated. They didn't want to want to accept Jesus as their king. We don't. We don't have the king. We only have the king, Caesar. Huh? We don't have king. Then what? What? What can I do? Crucify him. Huh? We don't want him. Crucified. This is talking about it. The outside the people, they really hated this this master, huh? the noble person. But then the servant, to the to his servant, he gave the, the mission. As he was giving them the mina, one mina to for each servant. So you need to work with it. Put this money to work. Verse 15. Then later he was made king, however, and returned home. So he, he became the king and he returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had uh, gained with it. The first one came, came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Yeah. So the first person, uh, he was, maybe he looked to really work so hard, so diligently. So then he could gain another 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So then the master was so happy. <laughs> so what did the master say to him, the, the king? 
how did the king say to him? Verse 17, well done, my good servant. Well done, well done, my good servant. His master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. Yeah, well done. So, can you feel that then, ah, this, this like voice, this can be look, this sounds look to be like the voice from God. After we, after we really live with faith, obeying God, trying to walk, trying to live according to the will of God, then maybe God can say to us, well done, you are a good servant. Huh? You are really working hard. Oh, with one mina, you could make another <laughs> ten minas. You, you should be so sacrificing. Huh? But then you are really, you did really, you really did well according to my will. Hmm? Work. You worked according to my will. So then, as you were trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. Yeah. As you were trustworthy with one mina, then you could make another ten minas. Then even I want to give you ten cities. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? The reward for our life of faith. Then God will give us the reward for our life can be great, so great. The glory in God. Huh? God will really bless us. God really wants to bless us so greatly like this. If we are really if we are really trying to live well according to the will of God, then God will really huh? Give us the reward for our life. Huh? You did well. You are really trustworthy. You really lived with a great faith that then even I can give you this great authority huh? in heaven. Huh? Or the same. If we are trust with, with a small commission, then maybe God will give us bigger commission, bigger blessing. For our life. Ah, he is very trustworthy. <laughs> maybe then, maybe God will give us bigger blessing, bigger commission for our life. So well done. Yeah, it's a good word, right? Yeah. We also want to listen to this word from God. Well done. Well done. Well done, my good servant. In verse 18, the second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Yeah. As if he was really working hard, then as if he could make another five minas, then he could be also receive the blessing of five cities. <laughs> five mina, five cities. Mina, mina is not a big money, right? Yeah. Mina is small, small. I heard it's a silver coin, small. But then, as he was trustworthy with one mina, as he was working, as he could make fruit five more, then he was given with five cities. As you are working, as you are living with faith, working for the kingdom of God, then bearing the fruit, then maybe God will give you the great reward. Great, great reward for your life. That's how we can recognize. Hmm? Maybe God, maybe nine trillion dollars can be prepared for you. <laughs> as you are working, as you could make 9,000 shillings here, but maybe in heaven, nine trillion dollars is waiting for you. <laughs> nine trillion dollars. That's how it's different. The suffering in this world, as you are really sacrificing for the kingdom of God, for the small thing, maybe you can make it small, but then as we are living, sacrificing for the kingdom of God, then maybe God is preparing for the greater blessings. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Our small momentary suffering today is can, what is it? Can make the un, what is it? Uncomparable cannot be compared with the glory in God. Huh? Yeah. 
That's how it is. Yeah, even here, Jesus is teaching us. As you are trustworthy with the small things, I will give you the cities. <laughs> cities. So, with this hope, with this hope and like expectation, we can walk for the kingdom of God more diligently today, even though we are sacrificing a lot today. But then, what the, the, the last person was the problem. <clears throat> the another servant, verse 20, came and said, So here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a place of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. <coughs> you take out one you did not put in, and reap one you did not sow. Actually, his word is wrong, actually. Huh? You take out one you did not put in. Didn't he put in? He put mina, right? <laughs> one mina. He gave one mina for each person. But then you take, you 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 take out one you did not put in. You reap one you not you did not sow. Actually, he saw this master. He invested huh? one mina for each person, <laughs> right? In, in, in the in the world of the economy, huh? he invested one mina. Actually, God invested for us, for each one of us. Huh? God gave us the life. God gave us the, 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 the physical things for our life. Yeah, right? God is taking care of it for each one of us. God is also, you can say, ah, God invested for each one of us. Then God wants to look at the fruit from our life. But then here, this person, the last person, he didn't really make the fruit. Verse 22, his master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant, you wicked lazy. In the, book, the, the, in the parable of talent, you lazy, wicked. This kind of word is coming out. Actually, he what is, what is the problem of this person? Lazy. Don't do according to he didn't do according to the master's will. He didn't do according to the king's will. That is the problem. Lazy. You wicked, lazy servant. So we need we also need to know that uh, we should not be lazy. But then here lazy means we need to be diligent for the kingdom of God. Don't just busy with our own life in this world. Huh? Many people they say that then, when you go out to evangelize, that then, they say that I'm busy. I'm busy. I, because I'm busy, I cannot go to church. But then from the viewpoint of God, who is spirit? If you don't do, do something spiritual things, if you don't do something eternal things, then maybe we are all playing in the world only seeking for my own sake. Physical things only, which will be disappearing. Physical things. You lazy servant. Actually, and also, I gave you the commission, but you didn't do that commission. You didn't obey my word. This is the problem. Huh? You wicked servant. <coughs> you knew, you knew did, did you? That I am a hard man taking out what I did not put in, and reaping what I did not sow, verse 23. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that, that when I came back, I could have collected it with the interest? Yeah, if you knew that then, that I would take out what I, I did not really sow then, even you could give the money to the bank, then, so that I could, at least I could <laughs> receive the interest. Huh? I could make the profit through it. Then even you did not, really did according to your knowledge, understanding about me. So you are so bad. Oh. So then he says to those standing by, take this man away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minutes. So they said, he already has 10, verse 26. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has more will be given, but as for the one who has nothing, even that, even what they have, what they have will be taken away. Yeah. 
The one who has more, they'll be given more. The one who has nothing, they even the, the one which the thing which they have now can be taken away. In the kingdom of God, those can be happening. If you are not really living according to the will of God, if you are not really obeying God, if you are not really bearing the good fruit, if you are lazy, if you are if you are found that if you are lazy, <laughs> disobeying God, then uh, God can maybe send the missionary somewhere. But if he doesn't do anything there, huh? He doesn't really evangelize. He doesn't do something then. But if another person is evangelizing in another place a lot, but then if because of that first person, nobody can be saved from that region because he's lazy not to evangelize, then what can be happening? The one who has many, many rams, he can even take over the place, the first person's place. So then, the people there can be also saved. Do you understand? Yeah. If, uh, if because of one person, then if the whole reason of if the dead one city, nobody can be saved, then it, it can be misery, uh, very ugly. But then, if uh, another city, another missionary in another city which is doing well, then maybe even he can take away, <laughs> take away that. That another, that the non-fruitful city, he can take the position. This, those are talking about this one. So the one who has many, even they can be given more. But then the one who has nothing, even the things which they have now can be taken away. Huh? That is the in the the spiritual world, those can be happening. So we need to know this. Oh, know this. In the verse 27, <clears throat> but those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Yeah. But then the enemies, they will be punished by God. Huh? But then here, what I'm trying to say is this one, the kingdom of God. <laughs> The kingdom of people were waiting for the kingdom of God, the new world by Jesus Christ, the new kingdom by Jesus Christ. But then the kingdom of God will be like this, starting like this. The master, he would give the 10 minutes, the one minute for, for each person. Then he would send, him, send each person, each servant of God. Then they are working, they are working with that mina, with the money from God. And they are supposed to bring the fruit, bring the fruit back to God. That's how we can the kingdom of God can be expanding huh, in this world. And then the, the, the good fruit, the, the, the many people can be saved, many people can be born, the, the fruit of life can be born by this, by this. Huh. That's talking about it. So that's how Jesus was trying to say about it. The kingdom of God is like this. It, it will be, it should be like this. The kingdom of God is not becoming suddenly. <laughs> people usually, some people say, that, think that then, uh, kingdom of God will come suddenly. Yeah, the people who don't have, who didn't really have any interest then, who are just so, uh, what is it, focusing on their own life then, maybe the kingdom of God can be very suddenly coming. Oh, did it, did it already come? <laughs> but then the people who are really working for the kingdom of God, they know how it's coming one by one. How it's coming one by one. We can know it. Like the Abraham. Abraham could know how God is working because God, Abraham was regarded as the friend of God. Then God let Abraham knew Abraham know the plan of God for this world. So if we are also, if he becomes the servant of God, then even God will let us know his plan for this world. Then as God is working with us for this world, then even we can know how the kingdom of God is established in this world. So anyway, 
we want to also say Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. It says that, Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back into, in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So the disciples of Jesus, when Jesus was ascending to heaven then, they were just looking at Jesus going to heaven, going to, up to sky, high in the sky. Then the angel, two angels were standing there. Then they were telling, they were telling the disciples, men of Galilee, huh? why do you stand here looking into the sky? Don't just look at the sky. Huh? Acts chapter 1 verse 11. Huh? This same Jesus, he will be coming back the same way as he came to this world, as he went to home, as he went to home, went back to home, went to heaven. He will come back the same way. So don't just look up the sky and uh, see, uh, standing here, there. The same when Jesus was tra transformed at the Mount of what? Horeb? Then when Jesus was together with Elijah and Moses, then Peter want to be living together with Jesus <laughs> at the mountain. But then yeah, they were not supposed to live like that. Huh? But then why, how were they supposed to live? Verse 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. And then the 12, uh, 11 disciples were there. And verse 14, they, will, they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So they, they gathered there every day. They were praying God together with one heart. That's how they were doing before until the Pentecost. And then after Pentecost, verse 7, and eight. What are they supposed to do? Verse 7 and 8. He says to them, It is not for you to know the times and dates the Father has ever the Father has said by his own authority. Verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And yeah, you will receive the Holy Spirit yeah, when they did not know it. <laughs> Well, at Pentecost, it happened. When you receive the Holy Spirit, then you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The time and date you don't need to know. Only the Father knows. Even me, Jesus, the Son of God, I don't know. Only the Father knows. You are not supposed to sitting here <laughs> only looking at the sky. Huh? But you, you need to do what? After you receive the Holy Spirit, you need to be, you need to live as my witness, as my witnesses. Go to the world, go to Judea, Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And you need to deliver my message. You need to deliver the good news of Jesus Christ coming to this world, dying on the cross for all our sins. That's how one you need to deliver for all your life. You are not just supposed to sit there doing nothing. <laughs> huh? You need to live according to the will of God. You need to do what God <laughs> commanded you. Hmm? The great commission. You need to live doing this great commission for all our life. It's not just for the ministers. It's for all the believers of God, all the believers of Jesus Christ. God gave us this great commission. We need to go to the world, Judea, Samaria, and all to the, go, all, go to the, all the world, to the ends of the earth. We need to deliver this good news. 
We are not supposed to live only, <laughs> only for our own sake, for our own physical life. But we are supposed to do, huh? do this commission for our life of faith. So don't just look at the sky and doing nothing. Huh? Luke chapter 13. Verse 6, 6 to 9, Luke, Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9, it says that Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9, Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went, he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he says to the man who took care of the vineyard for three years. Now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Yeah, that's how the, 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 the master of the vineyard who even planted the fig tree in the vineyard said, ah, I was taking care of this fig tree for three years. But then for three years, he didn't even make any fruit. So cut it down, useless. This tree is just uh, eating the, the, the soil. But then verse 8, Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I will dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Huh? So the gardener was trying to take care of this Fig tree, one more year. So please give him, give this tree one more year. Who is this gardener? Maybe Jesus Christ can be the mediator, the gardener, the take care, take caretaker, caretaker for our life. He will be interceding for our life. He will be guiding. He will be our shepherd. He will be guiding us, protecting us for all our life. And then. Jesus is trying to guide us to bear the fruit for our life. So this is the mercy of God. So maybe we are living by this mercy of God <laughs> for our life. Huh? Ah, so God is waiting for us. Huh? You also want to see Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 18 and 19, 19, 18, 19. <clears throat> I will read Matthew 21, verse 18 and 19. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he says to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. Here, you, we know this story very well, right? Yeah. As Jesus cursed the fig tree, <laughs> the physical fig tree. <laughs> he was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Jesus wanted to eat. But then he, this tree looked to be so abundant with so many leaves. But then there was no fruit. But then the, the Bible, in another part in the Bible said that it was not the, the fig tree, the season of fig. So no, it was not supposed to be fruit there, fig fruit. But then why did Jesus curse it? Fig tree usually symbolizing the Israelites. Israelites. Huh? Actually, Jesus wanted to find the, the faith from his people, the chosen people of God. But then the chosen people of God, instead of believing Jesus, huh, they rejected Jesus, hated Jesus. Most of them, but few, few of them believed Jesus. Seventy. <laughs> Seventy. 
among a few million. 70. <laughs> but Jesus was rejected, hated, and killed by the Jews. And then the temple was, the Jews, they, they made the temple as the marketplace. They were not even taking care of, they were not really worshiping God well. They were not even guiding, guiding well to worship God well as the religious leaders. So Jesus could not really find any fruit, fruit, fruit of faith, fruit of love, fruit of life. No, no, no one was saved through the temple. No work of God could be done in, through the temple. But then pe people were wondering, like the sheep without the shepherd. Then people wanted to listen to Jesus on the mountainside. <laughs> Why is it mountainside? Maybe Jesus was rejected from the temple. Maybe Jesus was making noise, <laughs> those, making problems. Then Jesus was hated by the authorities there. Then Jesus was, <laughs> has to go up. Huh? Or at the, Jesus was teaching the people at the seashore, huh? seashore or <laughs> mountainside, where many people could get. <coughs> but then the Israelites, and they, could, they did not really show the faith. Instead of showing the faith, no fruit, no fruit of faith, but hatred, selfishness, taste of school. They wanted to keep their position only. That was a problem. So that's what it's like God is war can be warning to us. We need to live bearing the fruit, fruit for our life. Don't be remaining as one talent. Don't be remaining with just one winner, your own life. You need to bear the fruit. <laughs> bear the fruit. You are lazy. You are lazy. Huh? That are the problem. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. Then how can it be bearing the fruit? Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. It says that, Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, But the seed falling on good soul refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And when you listen to the word of God, like the good soil, huh? but then don't be proud of you, <laughs> ourselves. Uh, we are good say, I'm perfect. Uh, yeah, we can also have many problems, right? We need to be careful. <laughs> uh, but then we need to try to have the good soil with a good heart, humble heart. Then we need to try to listen, accept the word of God, and try to digest it, practice it. And then when you listen to the word of God, when you understand it well, then this is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times. What are so? So when we listen to the word of God, when we practice it, digest it through our life, then even 100 times huh, we can bear fruit. Maybe you will be able to evangelize 100 people, huh, affect 100 people, at least 30 people, at least 30. What 30 type, types of the fruits, fruit of love. As we can live with love 100 times. We can grow big, 100 times bigger person, bigger leadership, the true leadership. So many people can come to us, then we, they can rest in God through our life of faith. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Luke chapter 8. Verse 15, it's also a similar word. 
<coughs> Luke chapter 8, verse 15. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hears the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. And when he received the word of God, then when he really live with persevering, enduring through our life of faith, then they will produce the crop for their life. So as we yeah, listen to the word of God, we want to know that then we can know that then how we should live. We are not supposed to live doing nothing. We are not supposed to live the lazy life. The laziness can be also a sin. There are three types of sins. Huh? What is it? Three types. What, what, what are they? Ah, arrogance. First, arrogance. And second one is deceiving. <laughs> arrogance, deceiving. The third one is laziness. Laziness is also sin. We need to know it. Arrogance is a sin. Do, do you agree? Arrogance. Arrogance is a sin. Deceiving. Deceiving people. Deceiving God. Deceiving Holy Spirit. This is also a big sin. And then the third one is laziness also. See? Yeah. Don't be lazy. Also, don't be disobeying. We need to try to live according to the will of God through our life. And then we will bear much fruit. We will bear much fruit through our life. The fruit of love. As, you, as the love is overflowing in us, love, patience, enduring, then even we will also, we will catch many people. We will guide many people. We ourselves can be saved. And then we will also show the love of God to many people. Then we will also, be, so then we can, we will be able to bear much fruit through our life of faith. So as we made this word of God, the parable of minas, the parable of talent, then we want to really have the, the important lesson to our life, how we should live. Huh? We are supposed to live obeying the, the will of God. You need to walk with it. <laughs> we need to walk. We need to live according to the, the will of God. Huh? With the mina, with the talent, with your talent, we need to walk. We are not supposed to live sick sitting there and just, uh, God, give me this one, God, give me this one, give me this one. We are, we are not supposed to pray like this. Ah, oh, God, I need this one, I need this one. Hey, we, we need this one, right? we need to pray. We, need, we can also pray for our daily bread. But then we can also live seeking for the kingdom of God. Huh? We can also live trying to interceding, prayer of intercessor. We can also pray for others. Hmm? That's how we are supposed to live. We are supposed to live with love, love of God for our life. So we want to read it again. Acts chapter 1. So we want to remember this great commission. You will receive Acts chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. He says to them, it is not for you to know, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. It is, it, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. Yeah, you don't need to know the times and dates when the kingdom of God would come. You don't need to know. Even I don't know. <laughs> Jesus is saying, I don't know. <laughs> Even the Father, the Father, the Father God, he knows. But what you need to do? You will receive the Holy Spirit, verse 8. You will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and then <clears throat> you will be my witnesses. Yeah. We need to be living as the witnesses for the kingdom of God. We need to be able to testify for our life of salvation. How God saved me. We need to deliver this news to many people in this world. You need to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, 
in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Yeah, that's its remaining. Uh, to the ends of the, this earth, we are supposed to deliver this good news. How God did the great things for our life. And then you don't need to be burdened that, ah, I need to study all the Romans where, then I need to deliver, I need to teach them where, organizing, very organizedly. Yeah, yeah, we need to teach them where. But then the more important thing is, <laughs> don't be so burdened like that. Huh? We need to, um, we need to remember how, what God did for my life, how God saved me, then we need to deliver this news. Ah, God, I was like you. I was sitting like you before the temple, court, before the temple. But then now I'm standing. Even God will raise you up. <laughs> People, we can also deliver this good news. Believe in God. Huh? Hold on to me. Raise up. Rise up. Then maybe even we will be able to raise up many people. Hmm? Look at us. Even we can say to the people, look at us. I was like you. <laughs> I was sitting like you. <laughs> Only living with the money. Huh? But then God changed my life. God raised me up. As God raised me up, even God will raise you up from your situation. So, as we made this world, as we know the will of God, <clears throat> we really want to live. As we live according to the will of meditating the word of God, then the, the, the joy can be overflowing. The love can be overflowing. And then, naturally, <laughs> naturally, we will be able to deliver this good news huh, to the people in the world. So then, yeah we will be able to bear much fruit. 100 times, 6 times, 30 times. But even I'm not sure <laughs> how, how many fruits I have. <laughs> but then I hope that <laughs> I can bear <laughs> 100 fruits. <laughs> even I hope that you can also bear much fruit yeah, through your life of faith. So we want to end here. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us this time to meet in your word. As God <clears throat> blessed each one of us, as God saved each one of us, that's how we could be standing here now. That's how we are sitting here now. <coughs> and, but then, as we don't know your will well, if, as we don't live according to your will well, then even we can be fruitless. But then as we know your will, as we meditate your word, and then as your word is working in us, then we can, the, the spirit of God overflowing, the true love of God, the true joy in God can be overflowing in us. Then we will be able to also live, overcoming this world. We will be able to live as a witnesses for your kingdom through our life of faith. So as we live, then we want to remember your great mercy for each one of us. And then we also want to continue to live following your will through our, through whole our life, life of faith. So then we also want to bear much fruit in you, so that you can be pleased by us. And then we also want to receive the great blessing and reward for our life of faith in this world. So thank you for all your grace it, through this time. Then I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, thank you very much. God bless you all.